Ever wondered how buildings manage to stay tall and how bridges handle heavy traffic loads? Today, I'm going to show you how forces move through these structures to the supports. Put it simply, external loads are transferred through load paths to the reactions. But you might be wondering, how does the structure actually transfer the load to the reaction? And what exactly happens to the structure when it's transferring these loads? Let us find out. Hey friends, if you're new here, I'm Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. The structure transfers loads by internal forces that are in the structure. These forces cause stresses in the material. And this depends on the strength of the material. These forces cause deflections as well. And this depends on stiffness of the material. Strength refers to the material's ability to resist external loads without permanent deformation or failure ensuring safety and load carrying capacity while stiffness measures its ability to resist deformation under these loads critical for maintaining structural integrity and preventing excessive deflection engineers use a range of materials such as concrete steel wood and composites each with distinct strength and stiffness characteristics to design structures for specific needs by optimizing these properties, engineers ensure that buildings, bridges, machines and other structures remain stable, secure and capable of fulfilling their intended functions over their operational lifetimes. So the real question here is, are internal forces actually affected by the type of material being used? And guess what? By the end of this lecture, you will find out the answer. So make sure you stick around till the end of the lecture to uncover this mystery. Steel beams generally have higher strength and stiffness compared to wooden beams. If a structure requires high strength and rigidity, steel beams are often the preferred choice. However, wooden beams can still be suitable for lighter loads, certain architectural designs and environments where more natural aesthetic look is required. The selection between wooden and steel beam ultimately depends on factors such as specific application, load requirement, budget and design considerations. Let's talk about internal forces. When we have a structural member, for example a rod or a beam, we need to ensure that the material it is made of can resist loading acting within the member. And these loads are termed as internal forces, normal or axial forces, shear forces, moment or bending moments. If you understand these three internal forces, I promise you that you will understand entire structural mechanics. You will not have any issue at all. To figure out internal forces, we can use method of sections. Imagine if we have a beam like this and we want to figure out the internal forces at point C. To find out, we can make a cut through point C. Once we split the member, we would have three internal forces. The first is normal or axial force that acts perpendicular to the cross section. The axial forces stretch or compress the elements in the direction of their longitudinal axis. They always act along the element. We show these forces by letter N. Next, we have the shear force that is tangent or parallel to the cross section. Generally, this is represented by letter V or sometimes F. Lastly, we have bending moment, which we represent with letter M. The normal or axial force is positive when it stretches the member and creates tension. A shear force is positive when it causes the beam to rotate clockwise. 
it is these pair of up and down forces that are called shear forces because their effect is to shear the slice. The bending moment is positive when the segment will bend in concave upward manner. And I found a way to remember concave upward by its similarity with the cup. The moment causes the beam to be squashed at the top and stretched at the bottom. In other words, the top of the beam is in compression and bottom is in tension. A pair of bending moment is bending the slide. Bending in a concave upward manner is also called sagging moment. This normally happens in simply supported beams. The axial or normal force is negative when it squashes the member and creates compression. A shear force is negative when it causes the beam segment to rotate anticlockwise. A moment is negative when the segment will bend in concave downward manner. The moment causes the beam element to be stretched at the top and squashed at the bottom. In other words, the top of the beam is in tension and bottom in compression. And a pair of bending moment is bending the slice. Bending in concave downward manner is also called hogging moment. This generally happens in continuous beams. When you find out axial forces, shear forces and moment, it means you actually carry out a structural analysis. At a very basic level, structural analysis is nothing but finding the internal forces and deformation. Remember, forces are related to strength of material and stiffness is related to deformation of material. At a start, I asked you a question. Does material affect internal forces? The answer is no. Because in linear structure analysis, whenever you apply load, it will result in normal forces, shear forces, and moments. Regardless of material type, be it wood, be it steel, be it concrete. These are the books that I have used to prepare this presentation. Feel free to have a look at them.